Welcome, in this video we're going to be learning about half-life and trying some calculations. So we know that radioactivity can be measured in becquerels using a Geiger-Muller counter. Another word that's commonly used to replace radioactivity in this case is count rate. So let's say I have a sample that has a 100 becquerel count rate. That means 100 decays are happening every second. So 100 radioactive atoms are exploding with radiation every second. Let's say we leave the sample, go watch a movie and come back to measure it again. Now the radioactivity says 50 becquerels, which means 50 decays are happening per second. So we notice two things. Number one, the radioactivity has decreased, which is natural. All things will decrease in radioactivity. And number two, we can see that the number has exactly halved. That means two hours is the half-life. Or in other words, the time it takes for the amount of radioactivity to half. Okay, so we're going to leave the sample for another two hours and come back. And this time it should go to 25. And for another two hours, it goes to 12.5. So we can see that every time it's halving and the amount and the time for half-life is constant. It halves exactly every two hours. Now, different samples have different half-lives. For example, if you have two different materials, A and B, one could have a half-life of one day, another one could have a half-life of 10 years. Also, it's worth noting that things that have lower half-lives will lose their radioactivity faster. But at the same time, they can be more dangerous because they release a lot of radiation in a short space of time. So here we have some radioactive material. Let's say that we measure the radiation and it says 250 becquerels. The half-life was given to us as 20 minutes. If we leave it for 3 hours and come back after 3 hours, what will the new becquerels be? To answer a question like this, we're going to use this equation. Becquerels at the start divided by 2 to the power of n, which means number of half-lives, equals becquerels at the end. And to find n, all we have to do is do total time divided by time for one half-life. So let's try this question then. So the start is 250, we're then going to divide it by 2 to the power of n. So let's work out n. First of all, our total time is in hours, so we're going to times it by 60 to make it into minutes. So we have 180 minutes as the total time, then we're going to divide it by the half-life, which is 20 minutes. That gives us 9. So the value of n is 9. 250 divided by 2 to the power of 9 equals 0 0.48 becquerels. <clears throat> so after 3 hours, the radiation dropped from 250 to 0 0.48 becquerels. Okay, here's another substance, and it's been left for 4 hours. 4 hours later, we came and measured it, and it said 5 becquerels. The half-life was given as 30 minutes. What was the original reading before we left for 4 hours? Okay, so again, we're going to use the same equation, but this time we want to work out the original or the starting becquerels. So first, we can work out n by doing total time over half-life. Now the total time again is in hours, so we're going to times it by 60 to make it into minutes. And divide by half-life, which is 30. That gives us 8. Also, we know how many becquerels we have at the end, 5 becquerels. So that gives us start divided by 2 to the power of 8 equals 5. Then we're going to make start the subject, so take this to the right. That gives us start equals 5 times 2 to the power of 8. And that's 1,280 becquerels. So that was how much radiation it had in the beginning before we left it for 4 hours. So our sample started with 1,280 becquerels and then 4 hours later it dropped to 5 becquerels. Okay, so these two were relatively easy questions. Now we're going to try a harder one. So in this sample, we started with 192 becquerels and we ended up getting 6. The total time for this was 100 minutes. Work out the half-life. Again, we're going to use our normal equation. Now we're used to working out start and end. However, this time we're going to work out half-life. So where is half-life? It's part of n. We know the total time is 100 divided by half-life. Since we don't know that, we'll just call it h. So start was 192 divided by 2 to the power of 100 over h equals end, which is 6. 
we're going to swap these two and make h the subject. So that gives us 192 divided by 6 equals 2 to the power of 100 over h. So that gives us 32 equals 2 to the power of 100 over h. Now let's make 32 into 2 to the power of a number. So we're going to use this button on our calculator and press log to the base 2 of whatever number we have here. So in this question we have 32. So it's going to be log to the base 2 of 32, which gives us 5. So that means 32 can also be written as 2 to the power of 5, which equals 2 to the power of 100 over h. That means we can cross out the bottoms and compare the powers. So 5 equals 100 over h. Then swap these round to make h the subject. h equals 100 over 5, and that gives you 20 minutes. So remember, this kind of question is going to be a little bit more tricky than the other two previous ones. So I'll leave you with this question. The sample started with 256 becquerels, which dropped to 4 becquerels after 90 minutes. Work out the half-life. So pause the video and give it a go. Once you're ready, press play and I'll say the answer. So the answer for this was 15 minutes. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.